The story of the Good Samaritan had a definite racial component to it. Jesus had just encouraged his listeners that they should love their neighbors as themselves. When a man in the audience decided to try to lawyer up and be cute and asked, well, who is my neighbor then? Well, Jesus wanting the man to answer his own question told him a story. He said there was a man who was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho on the King's Highway when he met up with some robbers who robbed him, beat him up, and left him half dead lying on the road. And then two of this man's Jewish brethren uh, passed by him, first a priest who saw his condition but didn't want to get involved or become unclean by the whole matter and skirted around him and went on his way. And then a Levite, another very respected person in the Jewish community, also saw him and saw his need, but again, skirted around him. But then he introduced into the story a Samaritan who was also passing by. Now a Samaritan would have been understood by everybody to be somebody of mixed race. Uh, Samaritans were neither Jewish nor Arab, uh, and so they, were, they weren't accepted by anybody and they were despised by all. But Jesus introducing the Samaritan, when he saw the man in need, he didn't pass by him or avoid him, but instead stopped and met his absolute every need and, and ministered to him until he, he knew and was confident that he was gonna be well and restored. Now after that, Jesus asked this man who was being cute, of these three, who was a neighbor to the man in need? And the man was left with no choice but to sing praises of a Samaritan, someone he would have and likely did despise. The point of the story really is that for all of us, we are just like everybody else who's made in God's image. And that for all of us, our, our calling, our need is to love everyone as we love ourselves. You know, there's an old Latin maxim in the law that goes qui tacit constantere or something like that. And basically what that phrase means is that silence gives consent. If someone, if you're in, if you're in a company of someone who pulls out a dagger on another person and raises it over that person to kill them, and you neither speak up or do anything to stop it, you're culpable in that crime. Your silence gave consent to the one who was doing the violence. And so it is with all of us that when we are silent in the face of anybody who's suffering or in threat or, or is being abused, or if we are silent when anybody's lying in the road in great need, then we give consent to those robbers. We give consent to those who are cruel and violent and hateful. We must speak up with our whole lives in support of all those who are suffering for everyone on earth is our neighbor. Be encouraged with Psalm 32, a Psalm of David. I'll read the whole Psalm to you, it's a blessing. Here the song goes, blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away, though my, through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely in the rush of great waters, they shall not reach him. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my, with my eye upon you. Be not like a horse or a mule without understanding, which must be curved with bit and bridle, or it, may, or it will not stay near you. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. I think we all know what it's like to have the hand of the Lord be heavy upon us. And when, our, when we're called upon to do what we know to be right. And so my challenge to you, my encouragement to you today is to not let your voice go to waste and, and to not be silent and give consent to all manner of wickedness and, and, and ugliness. But instead, use your voice, use your life, use these times to defend the truth of God's word and the knowledge that all men are created in his image and are worthy of love, honor, and respect. We love you, God bless you. Continue to be the church during this wonderfully 
you know, one of this, it is a wonderful time. It's a difficult time, but it's a time of great opportunity. Let's make the most of it. Again, we love you and we're praying for you. God bless you.